2. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, <coughs> Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves, doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, at the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. <coughs> she never left the temple but worship night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Courtney Cortez, message. Hi, guys. Hello. The so, baby loves the music. Oh, yeah, he woke up as soon as we started singing. <laughs> um, he must have not heard my voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I didn't exactly prepare like a speech or anything, but I did want to share some thoughts with you guys that I had when I read this. When I first read this, I was like, huh? I, more like, okay, so this is such a beautiful piece, what else can I say about it? Like, there's nothing really much for me to add to this. So, I was going to ask to talk about something else, but then I just, I prayed and I was like, Lord, I don't want to do something that I find easy, you know, place it in my spirit what you want me to talk about. And then a couple days later, I just got this feeling like, Remember all those times I felt discouraged and unusable? Imagine how Mary felt when these people came up to her and started prophesying over her baby. Sure, she, an angel came and visited her. Sure, she was like, all right, this is supposed to be like the king of kings. Like, But do you really think it clicked in her head? Mm -hmm. You know, especially Joseph's head. Like when it, these people, they didn't even know, not the Pharisees, I love how God never used the Pharisees. He used people that nobody else would even look at twice to come prophesy over his son. People that other people disqualified probably on a daily basis. And then they're having these people come up to their baby boy saying these amazing things about not only their son, but them as parents and Mary herself as a mother. She probably was like, all right, God, like, you're sending these crazy people up to me, like, I'm just going to trust you at your word. But she probably felt so overwhelmed and disqualified. And I just feel like this passage should remind us that, yes, we're taught to be servants of the Lord, but don't limit yourself to what Jesus can do with you. Amen. You might think, oh, you know, I've done a lot with my life, or... Um, I'm not capable of ever being used in these ways because you know your own sin, you know your own fault, you know the yucky stuff that's inside of you every day that people don't see, that only Jesus can <coughs> see. But he literally has been known throughout the Bible when that woman with the jars had only jars, 
he uses nothingness all the time. He, he can turn all your brokenness and use it to save somebody's life and you don't even realize it. Don't disqualify yourself. When you leave here, you don't even know what a smile can do to the person you're passing. You know, just don't disqualify yourself. Because imagine how disqualified Mary felt. Imagine how that, well, I've never heard of Anna before in the freaking Bible. I don't know who she is, but God calls her a prophet. Because prophesying is having the spirit of the Lord. You don't have to be some great figure, some, like, you know, some great huge person. You know, you could be a misfit, a nothing, a nobody. And God will still call you a prophet as long as you have relationship with him and you hold his spirit in your heart. You can prophesy today. You know, it's not um, magic. It's, it's the spirit of the Lord that rests inside you. If you feel like God is moving you to talk to someone, to pray to someone after you leave here today, I encourage you, don't let fear get the better of you. Don't disqualify yourself. Allow the spirit of the Lord to prophesy through you to talk to people, to use you. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> right, here you go. Sure. Yeah, Sweet to the point. <laughs>